it's happening. It's finally, I swear it's been, uh, I, I've seen the seasons change, the cycle of the moon shift uh, more times than I can even count, but it's finally happening. I put on the Christmas sweater because Christmas is coming late this year. Very, very, very late. Our queen, our moth, our witch, whatever you want to call it. She's dead. She's gone. She's out of here. It is, of course, Murky. Mur Murky has been nerfed. Tonight, I'm throwing a, uh, I'm throwing a disco party. Everyone's invited. I have the lights and everything. Just come on down. It's, uh, it's gonna be tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Moon Standard Time. Man, this has been ridiculous. So I, I already made a Mercy video where I talked about how um, she's probably over nerfed, and we're seeing that. We're seeing that she has a really low win percentage in all ranks. She's pretty much dead in pro scrims and Overwatch League scrims. But then at the end of the video, I said, well, it's pro it's still better to f overall for the game. I'd rather her be over nerfed than still be the same. And uh, I didn't really talk about that enough. So, I'll, you know, you might have noticed, you might have noticed, I haven't really been making many videos lately. I've, uh, it's been, it's been somewhat tuned down. I don't know if you noticed, did you notice? Well, anyway, what happened was there's the whole Mercy thing, and then it was pretty much pointless to play the game as a support main with uh, the whole Mercy meta going on, and it just wasn't really interesting. Plus, there wasn't really much to talk about because like, oh, well, how do you get better? Just play Mercy. I mean, it's pretty simple. Not too much to that. Uh, and then I figured, well, okay, I'll just wait it out. You know, two weeks, they'll, hot, they'll fix it, and maybe three weeks, maybe a month, maybe two months, maybe four months, and then it just kept going, and it never stopped. So when I say not worth playing, like the game is literally not worth playing as a, as a support player, that's a pretty strong statement because especially for me, I've, uh, I'm, I'm a guy who really doesn't like playing the meta. I always like playing weird stuff and being like trying to be a hipster and stuff. Uh, so the fact that there was a strong hero didn't really bother me because I have never had a problem with playing weaker heroes or heroes that seemed weaker than other heroes but um this this time it was different this time it was different because mercy was so much stronger than any other support hero that you were just at a significant disadvantage if you didn't play mercy and if you didn't play mercy not only that but your entire team harassed you the entire time to play mercy so you'd have to so not only would i have to mute the game i'd have to mute the in-game uh voice chat i would have to not play mercy which was just strictly worse than playing mercy right and uh, it was just overall a bad time. It was like, why even play this game anymore, sort of thing. And then when it comes to analyzing pro matches or watching pro matches, it's like, okay, so here they go. They went in and they made a mistake, but it's okay. Mercy res, and then the other team made a mistake, but it's okay. Mercy res, and Mercy has another res, and then she has another. So it was just like, okay, these <laughs> these fights are silly. What's the what's even the point? The best fights were fights where the Mercies died early on. So, or they had to burn res early on so that the actual fight, you know, the actual game mattered instead of just, oops, res, oops, res, oops, res. And you could see it in other YouTube channels. Like, you know, you're Overwatch. Those guys are heroes. <laughs> those guys really chug along, man, making, you know, a video every day or every two days. But you could tell, like, the filler was off the charts. Uh, Stylosa, the filler off the charts. And, and these guys, they need to have filler a lot of times, but this was 100% filler. Like, there's nothing to talk about in the game. Uh, but today... Mercy is no more. She's been nerfed. She's probably out of the meta as far as I'm concerned. It's still a little bit too early to say that, but I'm going to give it an 80, 80 to 20 odds that she's pretty much out of the meta for the foreseeable future. So now the game is actually, you know, it's a real game again with things you can you can do, at least as, as far as supports are concerned. So it was really a combination of uh, going and doing a lot of the PUBG observing and commentating stuff that I've been doing because... I can't do it for Overwatch, so there's just no opportunity. And uh, Overwatch just having this rough Mercy patch that has really sort of pushed me away from the game. But now that there's a Mercy patch, I'll jump right back in. And this time I plan on actually streaming it before I was always really uncomfortable streaming, but I've sort of gotten over that now. So I'll probably start, so I will start streaming again, probably tomorrow, tonight, a little bit too late tonight, but uh, tomorrow I'll have a video up and we'll do that as well. But, uh, but this isn't just, this isn't just a celebration video. There's, there, we'll, we'll talk about something. Well, we're here. We'll talk about something, right? So Jeff, recently, he made a post. This was two days ago. Two days ago, he made a comment because Effect 
a popular player and a streamer. He had a stream where uh, he was going off and he was real mad and salty about one stuff and one tricks and stuff. So anyway, uh, Jeff saw this and he made a post on Reddit about it. Here, let's bring it up. Here it is. This is Jeff Kaplan's comment that he posted on Reddit. Like I said, Effect ma made a complaint about one tricks and matchmaker and you know, no, no really unique content there, just the normal stuff. So I'm not even gonna show that and waste time here. We're just gonna go straight into the comment, which is, uh, he starts by saying, well, fixing the one trick issue is extremely complicated for a lot of different reasons. That's like the go-to for any game type. Everything's complicated, right? Well, okay, maybe it is. There's a, spirit, there's a spirit freedom and creativity to the game that we are eager to protect, but I also believe that other players can cause a detrimental experience. And then he says, you know, well, I don't have any solutions, but we're gonna look into it and we're gonna urgently look into it and yada 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 but he's, he gives one example one example is that they're looking at the reasons players don't want to group with each other when they play and that if players grouped with each other that would just solve everything everything would be solved if players would just always play in six stacks essentially he literally he literally says this he says i wish there's a world where overwatch players felt like they could play with whoever they want this would be an immediate solution to the problem but we're a long way away from achieving such a state we're actually infinitely away. I, I can't ever imagine a, a world where everyone always plays in groups all the time in six decks. So the thing about Jeff is his heart is really in the in the right place. Like I, I like him and his approach to things, but I think maybe it's because of his like World of Warcraft type of background as a developer, his his MMO background, that he really is very meta about everything, like overly meta and macro about pretty much every topic. He tends to approach things with uh, systems and alternative alternative things and systems around the game to fix the game instead of actually fixing the game and like social engineering and stuff like his his concept seems to be that you want to change the game last and you should just change everything else around it first if this hero is broken you should change the queue system you should social engineer to convince people that the hero is not broken and stuff before actually fixing the hero and this is something that you do see in mmo development and those types of games also the levity with which like oh well if we're gonna change something we might as well just completely re change it ridiculously so that the player needs to relearn everything that also i feel comes from an mmo type of background and like i said this is just me thinking from the way he tends to approach problems tends to align with the world of warcraft type of background this approach is not super optimal, in my opinion, for competitive games. It's uh, it's really just, it, it runs around the issue, and what you wind up doing is you make the issue bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, if you have a hole in your wall, you can keep painting over it and painting over it and painting over it, and it'll, it'll temporarily look okay, but in the end, you're just making a, a more of a mess. You might as well just, you know, fix the hole. Fix the hole, and it's done, right? And this seems like it's spilling over to the player base as well in the way they think of things. You know, if a hero is... Uh, if there's a problem with one tricking, well, it's not a problem with the balance of the game. It's a problem with you need to fix the matchmaking. You know, if the game's not fun, if you play with random players, well, then you need to make it so everyone groups up. Uh, where I think that the solution would be to, you know, make the game more more like that. You know, if you take a look at League of Legends and Dota, there's no one tricking issue. There's no you have to group up issue. Sure, there are, there are it's a unique experience to group up. It's a unique experience to play the correct meta hero in every role. But you know, if someone plays Terrorblade in Dota, and, and people say, well, it's a different game, but if someone plays Terrorblade in Dota, it's it's uh, Dota has even bigger sort of niches for heroes that extremely change the way the game is played. If you play Terrorblade in Dota, that's going to significantly change the way your team plays. If you play Techies in Dota, you're a you're a bad person. You should pick a different hero. Stop. Why? Or maybe maybe Dota is not such a good one. Maybe you maybe you don't think it is. Maybe you want to relate it to more to League of Legends, which is a much more structured game, right? You have jungle, you have top, you have bot. It's not as uh, flexible as Dota is, right? But in that game, you can still one trick just fine. Or maybe it'd be like, well, well, maybe it would be like if you brought a support player jungle without smite. That would that would be pretty bad. But then you wouldn't even get very far. You probably wouldn't get out of bronze. Well. Unless you were really good, you probably wouldn't get very far at all. Where in Overwatch, you see Symmetra one tricks playing attack Symmetra on maps that they're not supposed to be good at, and they do pretty well. Like they they win, they do fine. You're not gonna see a support jungle no smite one trick in Challenger, in League of Legends. It'll never happen. It's literally impossible. It'll just it's not a thing. Well, anyway, I don't want to get too long winded here. I, this maybe should have been an entire an entire separate video, but. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is that I think the proper approach should be looking at the balance of the game. It shouldn't be, 
oh, Symmetra is really lame as a one trick and that's bad, so we should systematically force them to not play Symmetra somehow by banning them or by not being required to play with them or by just, like, that's the wrong way. So something I would really like to see is less focus on systems and systematically fixing things and okay sure maybe the game is imbalanced in this way but if we have the system to force it like you know uh, if we force teams to pick this map or if we force players to not pick this hero by banning them it'll be fine uh, i would rather i think it's much healthier and much better in the long term and I, I think that this is almost inarguable that the game should come first there should be more frequent changes not necessarily huge changes, well thought out proper changes, but if, uh, you know, the game is still young. The game is still young. And to say that, oh, well, we have this game that is a very, you know, in Counter-Strike, yeah, don't change stuff. Be very, very careful when you change stuff in Counter-Strike because that game is as old as time, right? Overwatch is just a year old. There's no reason why we should hold the, uh, the current state of the game to this sacred type of thing. So that's all I want to say about that, Jeff. I love you, man, but um, I think you should zoom in a little bit more. Stop focusing as much on the macro meta, let's make systems and focus more on uh, the actual game itself. Because, uh, you know, we, we've seen tons of times that great games with terrible, terrible infrastructure and systems do phenomenally. You know, it doesn't matter how bad the user interface is, it doesn't matter how bad the technical support is, it doesn't matter all that stuff, it does matter. But in the end, if you have a fantastic, great game, it generally tends to shine through as long as you get enough exposure, right? So that being said, guys, uh, I mean, just look at PUBG, man. Look at PUBG. Oh, my gosh. Look at PUBG. All right, guys. Well, um, like I said, I'll have another video tomorrow, and I'll probably start streaming some Overwatch again now that I can actually play without being forced to play Mercy. I hope you all have a fantastic day, fantastic night, fantastic evening. And never forget to stay positive, and I'll see you next time.